glad that you joined us again this Sunday morning for our service. We welcome all of our visitors as well. To begin with, let's start with a few announcements. First, we are looking for ways to continue connecting with everyone in the church. So, as you may know, we do have a website, and we encourage you to continue looking at that and we have updated it with May schedule as well as further announcements and prayer requests. Also, we have begun using Zoom for some Bible studies. If you need help, then please let us know. We are usually here at the church between 3 and 5 p.m. on Fridays, so let us know you're coming and we can help you. Also, we have group me so if you want to be a part of that let us know it's just for texting and it's a way that a lot of people are staying connected with one another also we just got a new church app as part of our easy tithe account and so if you would like to have that information let us know it's probably a lot easier for people you can pull up videos see ways to connect with people as well as send prayer requests. So um, I want to remind you of all of that. And then at the end of this video, you'll also see more information, our website, our email address, and the phone number. So find that information, and we hope too that you will continue to give and support our church's ministries. Hope you are blessed by today's service. Good morning, church family and friends. We have several uh, local prayer requests for our soldiers, Mr. McGillberry, Sally, Leroy, Billy, 
Loretta, Chuck and Darlene, the Kyle Gipp family, Josh and Tori, the Swab family, the ministries of Luis and Joseph, our missionary family, the Alangas, the church family whose employment has been affected, and students studying at home, our SCBA sister churches, and our director of missions, Tim and Denise Green. Our state request today is for Alan Quigley. He is a Church Resources Associate Executive Director for Oklahoma Baptist, and he asks request for the opportunity to share the gospel. Our church planners this week are Price and Erica Wright. They are church planners at the New City Church in Kansas City, Missouri. Our global country this week is Brunei. Almost 80% are Muslim and nearly the, all the 9% who are Christians are ethnically Chinese. Some historic churches exist, but no new church buildings are allowed there. The penalty for evangelizing Muslims is up to five years in prison, a $15,000 fine, or both. Bibles are illegal and are confiscated if discovered. If you will, bow with me as we pray for these requests. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that we can come before you with our many requests. We know that you are the God that is still on the throne, Almighty. You hear our requests, and we know that you will answer them according to your will. We pray that for those that are need a physical healing touch from you in our midst. We pray for all of our workers that have gone from Indian nations that are, have ministries other places. We pray that you'll be with the Swab family, the people that are unemployed at this time, with the kids that can't go to school. We pray that you'll be with um, Alan Quigley as he does his work in Oklahoma to further the kingdom here. We pray that you'll be with our church planters in Missouri. We pray that you'll be with the country of Brunei, uh, with the evangelists to keep them safe and secure and protected and to give them the boldness to continue to reach out and witness to the Muslims there. We ask these things in your precious name. Amen.
my church family. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Kim Talmassey. Whenever I first thought about giving a testimony, I was nervous because I don't like the way I look and sound on camera. But as then I realized that it's not about that. It's about sharing the things that the Lord has done for me. And he has given me many blessings. He's best blessed me with an amazing son who makes me smile every day. And I don't know what I would have done without him and his dad in the quarantine. A loving family who I can turn to at any time. I have great parents and sisters and brothers who are always there to help. And a wonderful church family. I'm thankful for the services that we've been having. They've helped me during this trying time. And I'd like to thank all of the people who have participated, the worship team, and those behind the scenes that you don't see all the time, but you know we're still there. <laughs> thank you. The Lord has also blessed me with a calmness during this tough time that I would have never had without him. Good morning. I want to welcome you this morning to our service, to those of you who are watching and listening in to our service today. There's a bug going around. That's what we used to call it when some kind of a virus or something would break out in our communities and we would call it a bug. But no matter what we call it, we're all living under certain kinds of restrictions. We're told to stay at home. My barber closed his shop. And just when I was getting ready to start braiding my hair, he opened up. So I got a fresh haircut. So we're all going through some changes. I miss my church. I miss going to church. I miss our people. I need the fellowship that I experience when we come to church together. But we've all had to develop new things, new attitudes, new methods, different things like that. And during this time, I have felt sort of dry in my spirit, but I've tried to stay close to the Lord in the midst of all of this. While I was thinking about those things, I thought about my situation with that of the prophet Ezekiel. And in his book, in chapter 37, I read these words. The hand of the Lord was upon me and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I said, O oh, sovereign Lord, you alone. No, we'll discuss this. In our time, we read newspapers that carry articles from businesses and organizations that post ads offering positions for employment. They will list the kind of people they're looking for, people with certain skills and talents, experience and so forth. And then here we read about God recruiting Ezekiel for a job that needed to be done. So I ask you a question. Do you think God chose Ezekiel because he had certain skill sets or because he had specific talents? No. God seems to choose his servants based on their obedience and Ezekiel had it. Now, I'm building up to something here, something about hope. I've thought about prophets, and when I think about them, I start thinking, you know, the job of a prophet had to be the loneliest job on earth. Because if a prophet does his job right, people don't want to listen to him, especially if he starts saying things like 
This is what God says. Prophets had only one job, to speak for God. And sometimes God had some things to say to us that could be very uncomfortable. Things that God wants us to hear. There's an old story about an old Jewish astrologer named Moshe. Moshe would predict things. He would prophesy about certain things. And one day he said to people, the king's horse is going to die in a very short time. Sure enough, a few days later, the king's horse died. The king had heard about this man, Moshe, making that prediction. And he got upset with him, and so he had him brought in. And the king said to this old Jewish astrologer, what about you? When are you going to die? Now, right then, Moshe knew that no care what kind of an answer he gave, in all likelihood, the king being upset with him, being mad about his dead horse, he would probably have him killed. So he had to be very careful in what he said. And here's what he said. King, I don't know when I'm going to die, but I will tell you this. Whenever that day is that I die, you will die three days later. Guess what? Old Moishi lived to be an old man. I've also been reading about people who freeze to death. It is said that a person begins to feel a pleasant numbness as he slowly freezes. Then he just goes to sleep as he is freezing to death. But now if someone comes to his rescue, then there is heat that is applied to his body and there is much pain. Even though it hurts, it means somebody is coming to your rescue. Someone cares what happens to you. God is like that. He sends a prophet to people who are cold and indifferent to him. People who are spiritually freezing to death. So when God, through a prophet, tells us something, we need to listen. Because you see, God, through a prophet, is telling us something. Even when we get upset, we need to hear what God has to say to us because he is actually working for our good. So instead of looking at prophets as being some kind of a nut, we should be thinking about them as being messengers of hope because God has not given up on us. Because if he has given up on us, he wouldn't be sending a prophet to us. He wouldn't send anybody. So if God sends a prophet, that means there is hope for us. Let me read that portion that Ezekiel tells us about. The hand of the Lord was upon me and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the midst of a valley, and it was full of bones. Ezekiel is facing a very difficult task. 
because he is called to prophesy to the Jewish people. And this was at the lowest, one of the lowest points in their history. This little bitty nation of Israel had been under siege and finally they were conquered by this huge army from Babylon. Jerusalem is lying in ruins. The temple in Jerusalem has been destroyed. And Ezekiel, along with thousands of other Jews, are forced into exile into the capital city of Babylon, which was the modern day Iraq. So you see, the Jews had their own trail of tears. Now imagine something with me. Imagine being a refugee, living in poverty in a strange country. Your center of worship has been destroyed. You don't know what's happening to your people. You don't know about your family. A lot of changes have been made. So how do you, how do you rebuild your life when everything has been taken away from me. And that's what happened to us. For these people, the Jews, their whole life was in their worship. Because in their worship time, this is how their identity as God's chosen people would be strong. So in this situation, does this, mean, does this mean that God had ended his covenant with the nation of Israel? Had the people lost their very identity as the chosen people of God himself? That's the big question. And God has sent Ezekiel to these desperate and broken people to answer that question. Now, I want to talk about this, and I'll, I'll just paraphrase what the Bible is saying, what Ezekiel is saying to us. In Ezekiel 37, Here's what we read. Ezekiel says, The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley, and it was full of bones. Ezekiel says, He led me back and forth, back and forth among these bones. And he saw, he said, I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. Then he asked me a question. Son of man, can these bones live? And Ezekiel said, God, you're the only one who knows. And then God said to me, okay, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, Hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath come into you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons and make flesh come upon you. And I will cover the bones, your bones with skin. And I will put breath into you and you will come to life then you will know that i am the lord there's a lot of people in this country that have heard of jimmy anderson his wife's name was cora she went home to be with the lord a few years ago cora's father was a man named 
Martha Bruner, a very quiet, humble individual, had a soft, deep sounding voice. He came out to California when I lived out there and came on a Wednesday night and our pastor, Tom Stewart, asked him to preach. And Arthur Bruner chose this text, the Valley of the Dry Bones. And as he began to talk about in his message, how these bones came together. You remember the old song, the foot bone connected to the ankle bone, the ankle bone connected to the knee bone, and so forth, all the way up this body. This is what Arthur Bruner did. He started from the foot bone, and he talked about how that bone became attached to the ankle bone and the knee bone. And he described all the parts of the body as these bones would come together. But here was the thing. He was describing this, these bones coming together in the Seminole language. And it was fascinating to listen to him as he named all the parts of the body as he made this description. Here's what I believe. I believe that entire message as I listened to it. I probably sat there with my mouth wide open. I was just fascinated to hear someone describe the parts of the body and how they came together in our native language. That was the only time in my whole life I've heard someone describe the parts of the body and naming them in the Seminole language. It was fascinating. Now back to Ezekiel. Ezekiel says, so I prophesied as I was commanded. And he says, as I was prophesizing, I heard a noise. It was like a rattling sound. And as I listened to this sound, I also looked at the bones and I saw the bones come together. I could see the tendons. I could see flesh that appeared upon them. And I could see the skin cover these bones but there was no breath in them. And so God said to me, prophesy to the breath and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come breath from the four winds and breathe into them. And as breath came into the bodies, they came to life. Because what God was saying, as you prophesy and breath comes into these, these people were slain and they're going to live. And Ezekiel says, and so I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them. They came to life and stood up on their feet. And it was a great army. Then Ezekiel says, Then God said to me again, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say our bones are dried up. Our hope is gone. We're cut off. So Ezekiel prophesy and say to these people, this is what the Lord is saying. My people, 
I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord. When I open up your graves and bring you up from them, I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it. You see what Ezekiel was doing? He was bringing a word of hope to these people in a hopeless time. Now earlier I mentioned something. There's a bug going around. A few hundred years ago, in fact, in the year 1665, the bubonic plague swept through the city of London. I've read descriptions of what that thing did and what the city looked like. People who were able to escape from the city. Other people barricaded themselves into their homes. And in the description that I read, more than 1,500 people were dying every day. Bodies were piled up. They would just put them in open pits and there was not enough ground to go around and there were not enough grave diggers to do their job. It had to be a dreadful time, a desperate time. And today, you and I have been experiencing something like that. And then Ezekiel says this, that God was asking him a strange question. Can these bones live? Why? Why would, ask, why would God ask such a question at this particular point? Why does God try to bring hope in our most hopeless time? because that's what he does time after time in the pages of your Bible. You can read about individuals in their desperate situations when God would bring hope into their lives. So our question for today is this. Where is the hope in the valley of dry bones? Here's where we find our hope. This is where hope is. God always keeps his promises. If God tells us that things are going to turn out all right, we as his people need to trust him because God always keeps his promises. Now here is Ezekiel and he's confronted with a very challenging situation. Here's his people. They don't know if they have a future or not. They were the dry bones. And God is calling Ezekiel to prophesy to them. Prophesy, God says, to these bones. Now I can tell you this. I believe that God has called me to preach. And I can tell you this. It's tough enough preaching to people who are alive. So I wonder what Ezekiel felt. 
I wondered what he was thinking when God said, talk to these bones. But here's what I find. Why prophecy to dry bones? It's this. The power wasn't in Ezekiel's prophecy. The power was in his obedience. The power was in the promises of God. And so Ezekiel begins to prophesy. He's talking to these bones. And God begins to speak through him. And God says, I will make breath come into you. And you will come to life. And I will attach tendons to you, to your flesh. And it will come upon you. And I will cover you with skin. I will put breath in you. And you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. When you read this account, you will notice something. At the sound of God's promise, these dry bones rose up from the valley and assembled themselves into skeletons. And the muscles and the tendons and the sinews and flesh covered these bones and they became bodies again. And God called the winds from the four winds of the earth and brought life into these bones. And those bodies came to life and stood on their feet and assembled themselves into an army. Not just a small crowd, not a big mob, but the Bible says a vast army. And God explains to Ezekiel that this valley of dry bones represents the nation of Israel. They were dead. They were hopeless. They were cut off from the power of God. But they were not meant to remain that way. No matter what their circumstances look like or what history books may say, listen to what God says. My people, I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it. You see, God keeps his promises. Now here's a question as we get ready to close. When did God first make these promises to the nation of Israel? Way back in the book of Genesis, in chapter 12, God talks to an old man named Abram. He has no children. And he tells Abram to leave his people and go to a land that God is going to show to him later on. And this was God's promise that he gave to the nation of Israel. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you and I will make your name great and you will be a blessing I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. What was that last part? The last part says, all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. 
How would that happen? How is that going to come about? This. When God sent his son Jesus to the lineage of Abraham and the nation of Israel, God was sending his son to come to us to make a new covenant with us in his blood that would offer salvation and new life to all peoples on all the earth. That's why, that's the reason why you and I are here this morning. We are included in God's promises. When God makes a promise, he never forgets what he says. He never forgets his people. As you and I move through this season of pandemic, remember, remember that God is not done keeping his promises to his people because God is always faithful and God's plan is always eternal. And we, as God's people, can base our lives and our hope on the promises of God. This is my message for today. Now you who have listened to my message, if you felt God speaking to you, perhaps he was talking to you about your relationship to him. And you felt led to take hold of his promises to you. And remember this. God keeps his promises. He keeps his part of the relationship that he has with you and wants to have with you. But perhaps you've let down on your part. Make a decision now. Make a decision today. Pray to him. Establish your relationship to him. Then let me know. Write to me. Send me a note. And we'll follow up with you. May God bless you.